and that was the subject of the recent, as you may know, ABC TV Saving Andrew Mallard documentary. We've also attempted at Clayton Newts to address pressing national issues of provision of legal services to Australians in remote and regional areas. So in the last financial year, our lawyers met with pro bono clients in Wodonga, Bendigo, Walgett, Mudgee. We provided professional mentoring and training to community lawyers in Geraldton, in WA and in the Northern Territory. And we seconded a lawyer to Australia's most geographically isolated community legal centre in the Kimberleys, the community, Kimberley Community Legal Services Centre at Kununurra. We also flew one of our Darwin solicitors 1,300 kilometres every month to provide the only civil law service available to the individual community, to the Indigenous communities at Green Island in the Gulf of Carpentaria. In 2007 and 2008, we will fund a full-time solicitor position at a regional community legal service centre in a unique initiative by us to address the problem of access to adequate legal services outside of the capital cities. Now there, and sorry, this is not about Clayton Newton, I've gone on and on, but I just wanted to demonstrate by that that I'm not talking about, we do a little, you know, bits and pieces of the fringes. We obviously do a lot. What I want to emphasise though, because this is not a partisan issue, is that's what Clayton Newton does, but we're not alone. I think most of the other big law firms, or most of the other law firms full stop, recognise that there is a responsibility to do these sorts of things, and I think all of them are sort of, to a greater or lesser extent pitching in. I think that is absolutely fantastic. I suppose the issue then becomes, and this is not just a legal issue, but it's for architects, it's for other professionals, it's for everyone that I think is advantaged as opposed to disadvantaged and has something to offer, is why, why do we do it? And I think, that, I think there are several reasons for it. And I think the first point about this is that it is definitely not to change the image of the profession because you know, it's just not going to happen. You guys are still going to have, you guys, engineers, whoever, are all going to have the same jokes about lawyers that are always going to exist out there. And you know, because we've got thick skins, we'll sort of laugh along with you, etc., etc. even though deep down it will sort of you know, strike at the very core of us. But that, you know, it's, we are very sensitive people, deep, deep down. Absolutely. But in any, in any, and as a construction lawyer, I of course work with engineers oh so much, so they're always having a pot shot at us for one reason or another. But that is not the reason we do it. It's not a publicity stunt because we don't go into the press and talk about the sorts of things I have tonight. The only reason I'm mentioning it tonight is because I think it's so fantastic and I want to, to you all as professionals as well, to show that you know I think there's a lot that can be done and that we certainly take it very, very seriously. From a lawyer's perspective, I think the reason that we do it is, is partly this. So I think we recognise that in Australia, we live in a society that's under the rule of law and people need to have access to the legal system. And I think there are a lot of analogies that we can draw with exactly what architects can do as well. And that you know, having access to the legal system and in, in terms where you're properly advised should not just be the right of someone that's got enough money to fund it. It should be a fundamental right of every single person. And I think that's why, part of the reason why lawyers provide pro bono services so that everyone has that base level of access to legal representation. At another level, and sort of at a selfish level, but a nice selfish level, it's just so rewarding. I think, and you know, I can see Trevor there, and it'd be fair to say that whenever you do pro bono work, it is incredibly rewarding to do it because in our circumstances, in a major projects group, we might be working on a three and a half billion dollar toll road part of the time. But it's so nice to be able to then turn to doing something else, whether it's for an individual or for an organisation like this, and say, well, I'm doing it, it's actually helping people, it's a very, very good thing. And the other thing is this, that sometimes people might say, oh, that's just pro bono work, so you'll obviously do it quickly and you'll do it in a half-hearted fashion or whatever and get back onto your, uh, if you like, get back onto your fully paying work. The way we've set it up at Clayton Newts, and I'm sure other firms work in the same way, is that because it's properly set up, you get the credit for it in exactly the same way for doing pro bono work as you would for doing, if you like, chargeable work for a client that is actually handing over cash. So that, if you like, that sort of issue is taken away. What that actually means is you can actually be doing the best possible work you can for your pro bono clients because at the end of the day, for a paying client, you're actually thinking, well, I've also got to do this as quickly as I can because I know that they would want to pay less rather than more. With pro bono work, you'll actually be putting in and doing the best possible job you can because at the end of the day, it's the firm funding it, so you're doing the best you possibly can by your client. So rather than actually doing it in a way that's perhaps, so if you feel like, more quicker and whatever than you would for a paying client, you do the best possible job you can. So I think that, you know, it's extremely rewarding and I think, you know, that's 
one of the reasons we, I think, we very much enjoy doing it. And I think the final reason is this, and I think this is where it's not just lawyers, it's you know, whether it's architects, other professionals, whatever, is I think as trained professionals where we've all had the advantage and the opportunity of going to university and being trained in our professions, that I think we have a responsibility and we need to respond to community needs. But now, from our perspective, it's in providing legal representation to people so they can have you know, access to the legal system. In the, from this perspective, it's the fact that, you know, Architecture shouldn't just be for the people that can pay for it to build monuments and do this and that, but we all have a greater responsibility in terms of building better cities and you know, urban design and those sorts of things. So I've probably talked for far, far too long, but all I wanted to do was really say that I absolutely applaud the, what, what, what you've done, that Trevor and I have got a lot of fulfilment out of being involved, and we certainly hope that we can continue to be involved and we will watch this space with interest and we wish you all the very best. So thank you very much.